being here. Obviously, this is extremely important. I will tell you this next to who's going to be the next speaker, the most uh, talk, prolific subject matter right now is AI on Capitol Hill. That's all anybody's talking about, AI, AI. It is the flavor of the month. It is, it, it, it is really the topic of the month. So very important. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me to wave on, and thank you for having this hearing because we need to get this right. I'm real concerned. Um, you know, we, we and the, the Internet, we've got, we still got a law in the books that was, that was created in 1997. That we're in, and think of everything that has happened between that time and now on the Internet, and yet we're still going by the 230. I mean, it's just, you know, we've we got to get this right, and we've got to get it right as, we, as it evolves. So the, your help on this is extremely important. Um, Ms. Espinal, I want to ask you, professionally, I'm a pharmacist, so health care is extremely important to me. And I've been especially interested in the promise of AI and healthcare. However, there have been questions that have come about um, as a result of health data. For example, there are reports of chatbots giving medical diagnoses. I, I'm real concerned about this, and just want to ask you: What kind of privacy gaps are there as it relates to health data? Well, I would just say, as, as the as the daughter and the, the sister of doctors, I. I share that concern. You know, I think in terms of that's a, that's a great example of a high risk use of artificial intelligence, right? It's impacting someone's health. There are other high risk uses, but that's that is there could not be a better example. And I think when AI, like a chatbot, is being used, developed or used, and it's going to have an impact on a, in a high risk situation like someone's health, then there do need to be there need to be limitations on that. There need to be obligations to do impact assessments, and if it's going to create a risk such as offering a diagnosis inappropriately, then that can't happen. And you, the companies to need to have processes in place where they're identifying that that could happen and then addressing it. And by addressing it, I mean trying to ensure that it does not happen. Mr. Leibowitz, you want to? Yeah, I was just going to add, add a couple of points. So one is the benefits in healthcare of um, artificial intelligence uh, could be enormous. Um, you know, in a variety of areas. But there's also, as you point out, a big gap. Right? We have HIPAA. But there's a lot of sensitive information that's outside of HIPAA, right? It's what you're looking at on the internet if you're trying to find a medical diagnosis. And companies shouldn't be collecting that information and marketing it and selling it and transferring it um, without your permission. And so, you know, that is a sensitive category of information that your legislation on privacy uh, would require affirmative express consent for. In other words, can't be taken by consumers without clearly them authorizing it. Well, I, you know, I can see where it can be extremely beneficial. Yes. But I can also see where it can be extremely dangerous. Mr. Carter, if... Yes, please, please. I just I have, a, I have a small point because I think privacy and competition are actually two sides of the same coin. And another practice we're seeing in the healthcare space is we're seeing big tech companies shore up medical databases, particularly those that are rich in patient data. And so one of the things that we are really concerned about is we think there needs to be stricter review of mergers in the space because there's a there's big tech is really at a at a perch where they. I bless up. you. I have been on mergers in the space for ever since I've been here. It's it's. It, 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 Thank you. No, this and is that is something crucial. we've got to be concerned about. Absolutely, and, and FTC commissioners um, uh, Slaughter and Bedoya have also have also sort of sounded the alarm in the Amazon One medical case uh, that this is just going to lead to big tech entrenching their data advantage, and, and we think data minimization tools are, are, are a good antidote there as good. well. Good. Anyone else? And I'm, I'm, I want to. This is this is my area and where I'm really interested. Any other comments, Mr. Gregg? I haven't even played a doctor on TV. Uh, really? Well, let, let me ask you this. <laughs> what, are, what are the effects of misleading and deceptive content on consumer protection in, in the entertainment industry? I know that's, that's kind of what you're involved in, but, but um, what, what kind of misleading and deceptive content on consumer protection have, have we, do we need to be aware of and do we need to be concerned with? Um, I think I understand the question. Content in terms of um, fakes? Yes, yes. Because, you know, I, I'm such a trusting person. I, I don't know what the difference is and whether it's real or it's not. Um, yes. Well, fortunately for you, you weren't here earlier when I was talking about the, the um, terrifying, inappropriate images that were sent to me of me doing things that, as far as I know of, I've never done and would never do. 
and that's disturbing to have out there with a daughter who's on the, online, but it, it's, it's just an example of, I, th I think this goes, is, this is where my business transcends out into your business, which is if they can make me appear doing something that I would never do, it's very dangerous to think that they could make you the speaker, if we ever get one, the president, to say things, especially in really tense moments as we're going through right now with what's going on in the Middle East. The way things turn around so quickly, first of all, there's so much mistrust. People will have, if we tell them that wasn't real, they won't believe that either, that what's being eroded is truth. So I've said the other things I think about. It's taking the soul out of the art form that I perform in, but I also think the fingers of it reach way, way more broadly. Right, and, and again, Mr. Chairman, thank you for indulging with me, but um, and th this is why this is so important. We, we need to get this right, and I, I think the role that we play in Congress is gonna be extremely, extremely important, but the role that the, the private sector has is gonna be even more important. So thank you, thank you all. Thank you very much.